We are the survivors of a crime. We are the mothers and fathers wandering around airports, clenching a child's jacket. We are desperately searching for our children and grandchildren. We are the tired, heartbroken spouses still holding a bouquet of flowers while we mourn the loss of our lovers over the skies of an airport. We are the grief-stricken children tormented by the nightmare of explosions in the skies. We are the brothers and sisters with nothing left other than the silent pictures on our walls. We are the survivors of a crime. Since January 8, 2020, we are the survivors of a crime. We only bought airplane tickets. We are imprisoned in an eternal winter and we know that other than the warmth of our hand, our bleeding hearts, we have nothing to warm our shivering bones with. Look at us now. Our airplane was shut down. Look at us now. Baffled by inhumanity and cold-blooded murder. Was it with intent? How will we know without investigations? How will we know when the truth is bulldozed away and buried secretly? But no one accepts the truth as everyone around us insists that we must be patient, that we must wait, that the truth is confidential. Our case is in the clutches of intelligence and military organizations, but we know that our loved ones were sacrificed for either the beginning or the end of someone else's war. They were sacrificed for the ambitions of religious leaders in Tehran, sacrificed for the warmongering generals of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, intoxicated by delusions of exporting their revolution. We know that our loved ones were used as human shields. Everyone knows, but no one utters the truth. We are the survivors of a crime. The crime scene was destroyed and the belongings of our loved ones were shamelessly pillaged, stolen, looted and buried. The wedding rings of our loved ones were pulled off of their lifeless hands while their murderers stood over their corpses congratulating us for their martyrdom. They lied to us, they lied to the world. They said nothing of the truth and other than a handful of lies, they gave us nothing of the remains of our loved ones to remember them by. We are expected to be happy that Canadian investigators were permitted to visit the destroyed crash site, allowing them the privilege of photographing a few pieces of debris after bulldozers had flattened the smoldering land upon which the truth could have been pieced together. We are the survivors of a crime. Look at us. We had no opportunity to mourn. Look at us, we have been robbed of the chance to weep alone. During every one of the past 187 days, we have shivered in torment hearing news from the Iranian propaganda machine or some other country. News of secret agreements, the fate of the black boxes and the silence of international organizations. We have been writing letters over and over again, every day delivering them with shaking hands and writing more with jittery fingers. We huddled together, organized an association. We shared our most intimate memories and biographies of 176 passengers, children, PhD students, professors, eight entire families, innocent victims whose aspirations, dreams and achievements shall never be realized. We shared our private photos and videos against our will so the world will not forget us. Every night when the rest of the world sleeps, we lay down unable to close, close our tearful eyes, wishing never to awaken in this desperate world of injustice and treachery. We are the survivors of a crime, IKO, hides behind neutrality without any recollection of why it was founded 75 years ago. They patronize us with empty slogans of neutrality and lessons to respect in respect for the sovereignty of their members. They insist on treating equally those who break the law and the victims who deserve justice. We say to them, they murdered 176 human beings. They say we must support all sides. We say they will never have real investigation into their own crimes. We say their, 
the aviation agencies are not independent. They say they are controlled by the perpetrators of the crime that took our loved ones from us. We say at least condemn their actions, but they remain silent. We are the survivors of a crime. The backroom negotiations of politicians from different countries have robbed our eyes of any sleep. They speak of reopening embassies over the graves of our loved ones. They negotiate the price of, our, of their lives. What is the price of a nine-year-old passenger who has spoken three languages and made beautiful drawings? What about a 20-year-old girl with beautiful hair who was going to be a physician? How about the price of the university professor who loved sitting in the shade and kissed his little, his little daughter? We ask them to step away, to step away from the auction block. We say that without independent, fair investigations and justice, there is no compensation. We say that compensation for us is knowing the truth and justice itself. We say that our compensation is in knowing how our loved ones were taken away from us and why. For us, the compensation is knowing that no one will ever have to endure the pain we are to endure for the rest of our lives. Instead, we hear that the law is the law. We say that we want the truth. They say, you must wait. But can you see? Can you see that we waited seven months for the damned black boxes? Can you see that the black boxes are the first item in any airplane crash investigations? That they are not the last items to reveal the truth? Seven months we waited. Locker B two days, MH17 four days, Ethiopian Airlines four days, Pakistani Airlines just this past May four days before the black box were read. Instead, we must endure a laughable third report insisting that the military installation was misaligned for by 107 degrees. Are there any secret deals? We don't know. Are there any backroom agreements? We don't know. We waited seven months for the black boxes and still do not, do not know if they ever delivered them or not, if there's anything on them or not, if they have been destroyed or not. They say that we must prepare ourselves for years to struggle. We say, do not scare us with the passage of time. All of our watches are frozen on 18 minutes past six o'clock in the morning of January 8 in Tehran. Do not scare us with five years or 10 years. We walk, we breathe, but we are not alive to feel the passage of time. We were on that airplane too, but we were not buried. We are still flying on that fiery airplane as passengers of the crashing inferno that shall continue to fly for the remainder of our terrifying lives, terrifying lives. We are the survivors of a crime and we know that the Islamic Republic draws from 22 years of organized crime to misrepresent the truth to buy more time. They seek to buy so much time until we tire and perish in desperation one by one. No, we fear no, we fear not the passage of time or the intrigue of politics, nor do we fear the complexities of international diplomacy, the threats of tyrants, nor the intimidations of their operatives. We will not relent in our fight for justice and our demands to treat our lost loved ones with, with dignity. For they were not numbers on a ticket or statistics on a chart but innocent human beings that deserve to live their lives. What is the meaning of neutrality when we speak of innocent victims and perpetrators of a crime? Our demands are clear. One, we shall never ex accept the results of investigations that are led by Iranian government. If the IKO laws do not account for a case of this kind, change the laws, not the truth. Do not leave the perpetrators to investigate their own crime. We shall not accept their conclusions. Change the rules so no other government ever dares to, to fire missiles at innocent passengers three minutes after their own airport at 4,000 feet. Two, three reports published by Iranian government prove that the airspace over Iran is not safe. Until the PS752 crime is not resolved, close the Iranian civilian air corridor. 
do not reward criminals, prosecute them instead, and by doing so, save the lives of more passengers and crew, save lives instead of supporting criminals, ask who gave the orders to keep the airspace over Tehran open during military conflict, ask who ordered the firing of the missiles and why, ask who gave permission to fly despite warnings from safety and transportation organizations, ask why the crash site was destroyed within hours or why evidence was destroyed, ask why witnesses were intimidated and family members were persecuted, threatened and intimidated. Think of the lives that will be lost if you don't find the answers of these questions. Three, we asked the Canadian government to open criminal investigations into this crime. The Iranian government will not cooperate and they are disqualified to lead the investigation. It is imperative that a criminal investigation is initiated by Canada. It is necessary that truth and justice shall come before compensation. Canada lost 85 of its citizens and residents. Help us to open this case in an impartial, impartial international tribunal where truth matters. Four. We want to have an observer representative in the investigations. We are the biggest stakeholders in this tra tragedy and deserve to know everything. We have no trust whatsoever in the Iranian officials. We have lost our faith in the ICAO. Other parties to this case also seem to have capitulated to accepting the Iranian government to lead the investigations. Under these circumstances, no secret or classified information has any meaning for us, the survivors of a crime. The world must expose any and all information and show those unconditionally with us, the families of the victims. How can we trust the world that is that in over six months has failed to compel a murderous oppressive government to surrender even the black boxes? If our demands are not met, if the laws don't change, our fate will be the same as that of the families of Zahra Kazemi, Kavus Sayyid Amami, Saeed Malikpur, Nilufar Bayani, and many, many others. In fact, the world's fate will be, will be no different should the Iranian government be allowed to make a mockery of international law and human rights with impunity. We are the survivors of this crime, so do something so there will be no more.